Hello and welcome to Chemistry with Lisa. Here we simplify chemistry for you so that at the end of the day you will upgrade your scores in chemistry. So today we'll be having an interesting topic on separation techniques. So at the end of this class there is a, question, a set of questions for you to assess your level of comprehension. So make sure you watch this video to the end. Now let's dive into the class. Separation technique basically is used to separate mixtures. Please make sure you watch this, you, this video where we talked about element mixtures and compounds. I will also drop the link in the description box. Now, separation technique is used for separation of mixtures only. So these are the various separation techniques we have. Number one is sieving. Sieving is used to separate substances that have various sizes or different sizes. Substances that have various sizes or different sizes. Example, popo gare. Now, gare industry in the West Africa is a very good example. Where you have, when they, they, they sieve it, they sieve out the fine graded particle from the, the strong shrouded particles. And all these particles, they have different sizes. Number two is magnetization. Magnetization is used to separate non-ion substance from ion substance or ferrous substance from non-ferrous. Another word for ion, another word for ion is ferrous. So it is used to separate ion or ferrous substances from non-ion or non-ferrous substance. Example, if you have a mixture of ion filings and sulfur, or iron filings mixed with sand. All you need to do is get a magnet, throw the magnet at the place, and all the things will attach itself to the magnet. You have your sand or sulfur left behind. Next, sublimation. Sublimation is used to separate substances that move from solid phase to gaseous phase without passing through the liquid phase. Example, your camphor. The camphor you use in cloth, your camphor, the camphor you use in your clothes. You discover that you bought the camphor as big as this, put it in your clothes. After one month, the camphor has reduced. And yet, your clothes is not wetty. Why? Because it moves from solid to gaseous phase without passing through the liquid phase. Other examples are your, your air freshener, the solid air freshener you hang around, especially in the toilet, toilet and in chemistry, other examples include, you have your ammonium chloride, ammonium chloride, you have your paraffin, and you also have your iodine. All these are examples of sublimation, substances that sublime. Then we move to decantation. Decantation is used to separate a mixture of solid and liquid particle, or if it's a solution that has both solid and liquid Phase. For example, if you have particles of um, sand or particles of, uh, of uh, moi moi, the back of, probably you are preparing your beans and you have your particles of moi moi and the beans. In order to separate the moi moi from the beans, you decant, you pour excess water so that the, the back of the beans will close, then you decant by carefully pouring it out. That is what we refer to as decantation. The next one is filtration. Filtration is used to separate substances that are insoluble in water, or it is used to separate insoluble solid from liquid. Insoluble solid from liquid. Example, a mixture of sand and water. Filtration is only attainable with the use of filter paper. You must use the filter paper to achieve a, a filtration. So during filtration, this is your funnel and this is your filter paper. You discover that probably you have a mixture of sand and water or chalk suspension in water. You pour the solution here. When you pour the solution, let's say sand and water, you will have your sand settled here. The sand that settled here is known as the residue. And then the, the, the liquid or the water that passes through is known as the filtrate. Is known as the filtrate. So this is filtration for you. Then we move to the next one, centrifugation. Centrifugation is used to separate blood from plasma. 
it is mostly used in the hospital when they want to separate the blood, the blood from the, the blood cells from the plasma. Usually, when you want to know your PCV or whatever that is component of your blood, you go to uh, to the lab. The, the medical lab scientist takes a little portion of your blood and puts it in a in a centrifuge machine with times. At the end of the day, the end of the day, the blood particles break into different particles, telling you the number of your PCV, the amount of protein, urea, and other components present in your blood. The next one is distillation. Basically, basically, distillation is used to separate two or more miscible liquids that have different boiling points. Distillation and fractional distillation are based on boiling points, but Distillation is used to separate two or more miscible liquids that have wide boiling points. They have wide boiling points. Example, a mixture of ethanol and water. A mixture of ethanol and water. So, ethanol boils at 78 degrees Celsius. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. At the end of the day, you discover that ethanol will boil out first before your water and the boiling points are wide this is 22 degree difference so the boiling points are wide while fractional distillation is used to separate miscible liquids two or more miscible liquids with close boiling point the boiling point here must be close and it is carried out using a fractionating column it is carried out using what we call a fractionating column because this is where the actual separation takes place. Example of substances you can separate using fractional distillation include petroleum or crude oil. Then you can also use it in separation of air. A very good question. Examiners love to ask. Then the next one is chromatography. Chromatography is used to separate substances that are needed in small quantities. It is used in separation of colors. It is used in separation of colors, dyes, anything color, anything dyes. It, it is used in scientific research to find out the amount of preservatives required for a particular thing, if it is in excess, or the constituents of a, of a, of a mixture to know if anyone is in excess. Many a times, our NASDAQ or our NAVDAC or other science or food scientists, they make use of chromatography to discover if the preservatives needed are necessary or they are in excess amount. So anything color dye needed a small amount like protein, you make use of chromatography. Now chromatography is divided into two. We have the moving, the stationary phase where the solvent is adsorbed. Adsorbed not absorb, absorb, not absorb. This is, chromatography does not work with this, chromatography works with this, absorb. Absorb means that, what's the difference between the two? In absorb, the molecules are retained, but in absorb, the molecules can be removed. Let me give you a practical example. When you bring a foam and throw it in water, it absorbs the water. Now, if you want the, foam, the water to go back, what do you do? You press the foam, the water will go, and then you have your foam back. But when you say absorb, it absorbs when you throw something in water or in anything, it, it takes in the molecule, but you cannot press it back for it to come out. You say it absorbs. So the chromatography, in a chromatography, the, the moving, the, the stationary phase absorbs the solute. Why? Why the moving space dissolves the solute. And chromatography is basically based on one thing, on the rate of speed, the one that gets there first. Then we get to the next one, crystallization. Crystallization basically is used to separate salts that cannot withstand heat. Salts that are not stable when you heat them. When you heat them, they will form another substance entirely. So in order to prevent it from, uh, from forming another substance, you crystallize them. Those salts, you crystallize them from their solution. Example, copper 2 tetrodosulfate is pentahydrate, 
um, ion 2 tetrodosulfate is heptahydrate. Now, these salts, when you heat them, it will change to another thing entirely. For example, the color of this salt is blue. Now, when you heat it, the water molecules will go, and this one will decompose to form another thing entirely. And that's not what you want. So, in order to get these salts back, you do what? You crystallize. Probably you want the crystals of this from this. So, you just crystallize and get your uh, crystals of copper tetrodosulfate of the series back. Now, what if you have a mixture of two salts like this? Remember, crystallization is when you have them with, in their solution. So when you have two or more salts like this, you need to separate them using fractional crystallization because these two salts are very fragile. When you heat them, they will decompose and form another substance entirely. So you use fractional crystallization for them. Now I want you to note that drug and sugar industry makes use of crystallization very well. Drug and sugar industry. They make use of crystallization very well. Number 12 is use of separating funnel. Use of separating funnel is used to separate substances that have diverse plurality. For example, a mixture of kerosene and water. When you have a mixture of kerosene and water, what is the best way to separate it? You separate it use of separating funnel. At the end of the day, you have your water separate, then you have your kerosene separate. And note that when you have a mixture of kerosene and water, water will be down because water is denser, kerosene will be up. Another example is a mixture of, a mixture of water and fuel, a mixture of water and fuel, a mixture of water and oil as well. Then the last but not the least is evaporation. Evaporation is used to separate salts that are very stable to heat. Those salts that when you heat them from their solution, the, the, water, the water of their solution will go out but the substances remain where they are. You say that they have, you use evaporation for them. Example, when you have a mixture of uh, seawater, when you have seawater, seawater is a mixture of sodium chloride in solution. Sodium chloride in solution. Another example is your washing soda. Your washing soda or washing powder. That is sodium trioxocarbonate or decahydrates. When you have a mixture of this, you can heat it. Like for example this, when you heat the water, the water goes out, this substance can never decompose on heat. Likewise this, when you heat this, the water goes out, this one can never decompose on heat. So substances that can never decompose on heat, you use evaporation. Okay, so let's just revise everything I have said. Number one, sieving is used to separate substances that have different or various sizes. Ma number two, magnetization is used to separate ferrous or iron substance from non-ferrous or iron substance. Sublimation is used to separate substances that move from solid phase to gaseous phase without passing through the liquid phase. Example, ammonium chloride. Decantation is used to separate a phase of solid and liquid. Filtration is used to separate insoluble solid or immiscible solid from their liquids. Example, a mixture of sand and water. Centrifugation is used to separate blood from plasma, blood cells from plasma. Distillation is used to separate substances that have wide boiling points, mostly miscible liquids, two or more miscible liquids with wide boiling points. Fractional distillation is used to separate two or more miscible liquids with close boiling points. Example, your crude oil or egg. Chromatography is used to separate substances that are needed in small quantity. Example, colors, dyes, protein, preservatives, and food ingredients. It is used for scientific investigations. Crystallization is used to separate salts that cannot withstand heat or salts that decompose easily on heat from their solution. Fractional crystallization is used to separate a mixture of salts that decompose easily from their solution. Use of separating funnel is used to separate substances based on their plurality. Example, a mixture of kerosene and water. Now, let's move over to the questions. Let's access our level of comprehension. Evaporation is used to separate salts that do not decompose on heat. 
thoughts that are strong when you keep them. Okay, so these are our questions for today. So let's answer to assess our level of comprehension. Number one, sugar is separated from its impurities by crystallization. It's separated from its impurities by crystallization. How is that done? Crystallization is used to separate salts that decompose easily on heating from their solution. So, crystallization is used for sugar and drug industry. Number two, when a solid disappears completely as a gas on heating, the substance is said to have undergone sublimation. 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 Then, number three, the chromatographic separation of ink is based on the ability of the components to move at different speed. Move at different speed. Move at different speed. They are moving at different speeds and one is going to arrive earlier. Sieving is used to separate substances that have various sizes. Various or different sizes. Depending whichever one your examiner uses for you. Okay, number five. A mixture of sand, ammonium chloride and sodium chloride is best separated by... Now this question, I love it so much because it has... A combination of so many other um, separation techniques. Now, what are you going to do to a separate a mixture of this? The first thing is to sublime, sublimation first, sublimation, so that you can remove this ammonium chloride can go. Then you have a mixture of sand and water left. Now, a mixture of sand and water left. Sand is insoluble. Sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is soluble, but sand is insoluble. So when you have a mixture of sand and the sodium chloride, what do you do? You filter filtration, followed by filtration. You filter out. When you filter, sand will remain as a residue, while sodium chloride is dissolved with water and passed as a filtrate. Then if you need your sodium chloride crystal back, you now evaporate. You evaporate. So these are the separation techniques that are necessary to achieve this or to separate them. The last question, a mixture of oil and water can be separated by the use of separating funnel. Use of separating or separation funnel. You can separate them using that separating funnel. Alright, so we come to the end of this class today. Please do well to subscribe to our channel, like and share to your friends. Invite them so that they can also learn as well as you. Thank you for staying with us. Have a great time. Success in your exams. Bye.